What is up everyone? My name is Desai and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about the fundamentals of programming or ito yung mga necessary skills na kailangan mong pag-aralan pag gusto mong magiging programmer or maging BSIT student. Let's start! Alright, kagaya nga na sabi ko kanina, we'll be talking about the fundamentals of programming. So, simulan na natin with number one. Number one skill na gusto kong malaman nyo ang importance ng visualization sa programming. So, if we have a teammate na hindi masyadong kagalingan sa programming, pwede natin explain through visual aids. Visual aids meaning we will be using flowcharts. What are flowcharts? Let's define what a flowchart is. A flowchart is a diagram of a sequence of movement or action, people, or things involved in a complex system or activity. A graphical representation of a computer program in relation to its sequence of functions as distinct from data it processes. So basically, it's a visual aid for those people kung paano natin i-represent -re yung mga data na nilalagay natin sa isang program kung paano ito yung pagkasunod-sunod. So basically, ang flowchart po ay yung flow ng ating program. So here are the different parts of a flowchart. Number one, we have the terminal or the beginning or the end. So, ito yung pag-umpisa at yung pagtatapos ng ating pagpro-program. Number two will be the process or the operations kung paano natin ano yung mga ilalagay natin sa ating program. Number three will be the decisions or yung mga conditions or paths natin na ititake kapag magkakaroon tayo ng decision making. And last would be the input and output which it is defined by itself na. Okay, I will be giving an example of how a flowchart works. So, picture Q. Alright, so nandito na sa gilid natin. So, we have here a variable called integer temp or integer temperature. We all know that water boils at 100 degrees. So, ayan, science fact for you guys. If di nyo pa alam yun, uh, ayan. So, water boils at 100 degrees. So, our program test kung paano or kung magboboil na ba siya sa given nating input which is sabi dito magkakaroon tayo ng input of temperature so we will be adding or yung user magkakaroon ng input so sabi na lang natin na meron tayong input of 87 degrees yung 87 degrees yan magsa-start yan sa umpisa then ang mangyayari 87 degrees pupunta siya ngayon sa decision or the conditional Ito po yung diamond. Yung diamond na yan, meron tayong nakikita sa gilid niya ng yes or no. Ibig sabihin, kapag nag-yes siya, ibig sabihin, uh, nasa boiling point na siya or nag-exceed siya sa boiling point. Kapag nasa no siya, ibig sabihin, hindi pa siya nag -re reach sa boiling point. Okay. Since ang given natin, guys, ay 87 at hindi pa siya nag-exceed ng 100, sa tingin nyo, saan siya pupunta? 87 na yan, so lesser than siya ng 100. So, common sense, it will go to the no. So, ibig sabihin, hindi pa siya nag-re-reach ng boiling point. So, sa pinakadulo, magkakaroon tayo ng output, which is yung output niya, yung hindi pa nag-re-reach ng boiling point. So, that's how a flowchart basically works. So, Josiah, meron bang other ways kung paano natin ma-visualize ang ating program? Well, meron. You can also use drawings. Kapag hindi talaga nila magets, you can use drawings para gumamit tayo ng different objects na ma-represent yung ating program. Example, buksan nyo yung paint program nyo sa iyong computer and then i-drawing nyo na kung paano yung flow niya. Another way to represent is by using words or using pseudocodes. Pseudocodes are informal ways of explaining the program. So here's an example of a pseudocode for you. You can pause this video if you want to read the simple pseudocode that I will be giving to you. Number two will be our syntax encoding environment. Which means, ito yung programming grammar natin. Pag sinabing syntax, guys, ito yung way natin kung paano natin i-write yung ating code. So, there are different types of languages na alam natin. We have these types of languages na pwede nating pag-aralan. But for now, I will give you some of my examples. Number one, we have Python, which is ang um, pag-print natin ng Hello World or yung pinaka-basic form kung paano tayo or pag nag-aaral tayo ng programming, ganito mag-print ng Hello World sa Python. 
Kapag Perl naman, ganito naman siya. And kapag C++, ganito naman siya. And kapag Java naman ang ginamit natin, ganito rin naman. So, itong example natin, guys, is how you can write hello world in different ways sa different languages or different syntax na pwede nating ilagay. So, it really depends on how, what or what languages kung anong ginagamit natin. Let's talk about IDE or Integrated Development Environment. Dito tayo nagpo-program or dito natin nilalagay yung line of codes natin. Here are some examples of IDE. Depende rin po yan sa type of language na ginagamit natin when we program. Yung autocomplete guys, ito yung abis na yung user ang mag-write, nag-auto-predict siya. Another tip kapag nag-write tayo ng code guys is we have to write pretty clean codes para ma-understand natin kung paano natin siya basahin. Kasi kapag tayo nagkaroon ng project development at pinakita natin to sa ating mga kagrupo, ay there's a possibility na baka hindi nila magets lalo na kapag spaghetti coding yan. Sobrang gulo at ilang beses na siya naglo-loop. So, mahirapan silang mag-understand ng code. Lalo na kapag nasa uh, working environment ka na or pinakita mo man lang ito sa professor mo at hindi nila ma-understand yung flow ng coding mo, baka bumagsak ka sa project development nyo. So, here are ways kung paano nila sinusulat yung ating pagpaprogram. Merong two types of programmers na uh, nasa industry. So, it really depends kung paano kayo mag-write ng code para sa sarili nyo. So, it's really subjective. As long as it is readable, yun ang kagandahan niya. Another tip, guys, kapag nag-write tayo ng code, make sure to include comments para ma-understand ang isang block of code ng isang student or another person or another client. Let's proceed to number three, which are functions. Functions has names and its parameter. Ito yung mga nilalagay natin sa functions. Functions allow you to look at the bigger picture. It uses encapsulation and lets you reuse code. Enables easier shareability and allows you to break programs into manageable parts or pieces. Let's talk about built-in functions. Pag sinabing built-in functions, guys, ito yung mga pwede nating include na ating program. Here are some examples of built-in functions sa ating program. Kagaya nga ng sabi ko kanina, ang functions can be reused anytime para pwede mo siyang tawagin in any part of the program. Let's proceed to number four, which are objects. Objects define a class and make a new object. We talk about objects, dito na papasok ang OOP. Sa so, kakal nyo dito, pagdating ng subject sa first year nyo na introduction to Java. Kasi dito mostly ina-apply yung OOP or pag sinabing OOP, object-oriented programming. Matatakal nyo dito ang inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction, and encapsulation. Let's talk about classes. Sa isang class, meron tayong example na lagay nito. Meron tayong table or yung, alam nyo na, table. Ito, ito yung image ng table. So, itong table na to, meron tayong properties of a table. Kung saan siya gawa, uh, ilan yung legs niya, anong color niya, and also yung height niya. Sabihin na lang natin, magde-define tayo ng isang object. So, object 1, or meron tayong table number 1, meron tayong properties na katulad na to. Tapos, meron pa tayong object number 2, which is yung table number 2, na meron tayong properties na ganito. So basically guys, ang different objects have their own properties. Let's talk about data types guys. Here are some examples of data types. So we have here number 1, integer, or ito yung mga whole numbers. Kapag gusto naman natin mag-define ng isang decimal point na isang number, we can use this type of data type, which is a floating number or we call a float. So ito yung paggamit ng a number with a decimal point. Let's talk about character or char. When we talk about character, you are using only one letter. Then we also have another one called string or a set of characters. When we use a string, we have to use the double quotation marks. Pag char naman or character, kailangan natin gamitin yung single quotation marks. Yun yung standards kapag nag-write tayo ng code. 
And lastly, if you want to talk about boolean, ito yung pag-define natin sa isang variable if it is true or false. So those are the basic data types that I can give you, but there are other data types that you can search. And it is also available in the internet. And the last tip that I can give you is debugging or the importance of debugging. Debugging is the process of finding and resolving bugs or problems within a program. Don't worry guys, it's very normal for a programmer to encounter bugs. Kapag ikaw ay programmer na hindi ka naka-encounter ng bug, ay napakatalino mo na. Pero it's very normal guys, wala talagang programmer na hindi nag-start na um, di maka-encounter ng bugs. Anyways guys, when we talk about debugging, it is the use of a debugger. So sa ating IDE, sabi ko nga kanina, gumagamit tayong IDE. So... Another tip for you guys is print a debug. So, you can insert strings para ma-pause yung program natin para if successful dito sa line of code na to, pwede nating lagyan ng stop dito or lagyan natin ng string para malaman natin if dito sa program na to ay gumagana pa rin yung line of code na yun. Kapag hindi nag-print out yung string na yun, which means uh, nag-fail dun sa part na yun or dun sa before. Another one is post modem debugging or wolf fence algorithm. Personally ako hindi ko pa siya masyado nagagamit kasi uh, ako ay nagsa-start pa lang sa isang programmer but here are some tips na na-research ko kung paano rin natin ma-improve yung pagde-debug natin. So there you have it guys, here are some tips that I can give to you when you are starting as a programmer. I hope that you like this video and also if hindi ka pa nakapag-subscribe sa aking channel please do consider in subscribing. And next time, I will tackle about more tips about programming very soon. Very soon, guys. Thank you so much for the support, guys. And see you on the next video. Bye, guys!